Hi, I'd like to show you how to make two different sequence diagrams. So let's get started. First, go to lucidchart.com, click on Documents after you've logged in, click on New, Blank Document, and then wait a few moments for the Canvas workspace area to show up, then click on Shapes, and we need to add in UML. We will click UML and click Use Selected Shapes. And now, if I scroll down far enough, I will see UML Sequence. Okay, so we're ready to draw, but first we need a problem. So I have prepared a problem. Imagine that you own a comic book shop, and right now your inventory of comic books is all paper-based, and so what you need is some system, some overall system, whether it's a mobile application or a web-based application, that's gonna track the comics that you have in inventory. And later on, it's gonna allow customers from outside of your organization to see the comic books that you have on hand. So this is what the overall requirement statement might look like. Um, it's gonna allow, your system's gonna allow employees to basically track uh, comic books by recording the publisher, rating, issue number, as well as the name and title of the comic book. Um, some of the things the employee can do is add and edit publishers and ratings as well as the comic book titles. You're going to have to um, make your employees enter a username and password to log in. Uh, and both employees and collectors of comic books can search for comic books based on the title, publisher, and rating. Okay, so relatively straightforward. What we could do is we could turn that statement into a use case diagram that looks something like this. This is in essence a um, index of the features or a table of contents of the features that your application should have. And it also indicates who can do the things. So an employee should be able to enter comic books, uh, enter different publishers as new publishers come out, enter ratings, and by ratings I mean condition of the comic book. Uh, and in order to be able to do any of those things, uh, these three things in particular, the employee needs to log in first. So there's really two different use cases that have to happen. Okay, to make a sequence diagram, a sequence diagram is a visualization of the steps in a use case, and we can have this use case uh, come from different perspectives or levels of detail. So one level of detail is very high, and that's from the business perspective, and then a lower level is from the code perspective. So first, I want to do this from the business perspective at a high level, create a sequence diagram out of that, and then go into greater detail and do it from the code level. So as I go down further, here is the use case that I want to analyze with the sequence diagram. So the use case is called enter a comic from the previous diagram, and there are three steps to it. Add a comic, click the add a comic function, enter comic information, and then save the comic. All right, we are ready to get started. Okay, um, one thing I'd like to do is just copy over from another page that you can't see the uh, list of steps in the use case. That'll help me. Okay, for my sequence diagram then, as I get a little bit oriented, first thing I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna actually borrow a symbol from use cases and I'm gonna put an actor on here and I'm gonna say this is the employee. I could also do a class uh, diagram shape here, um, an object shape, and that uh, a rectangle, and that would be fine as well. Uh, the, okay, so but for the rest of this, I can just use the standard sequence diagram symbols. And then right here, I'm gonna write comic system. So the type of diagram that I'm making right now is a form of sequence diagram called a system sequence diagram. And this is really a, a high level sequence diagram that doesn't show the software details but emphasizes uh, the case from a business user's perspective or better said a system sequence diagram is a diagram from the uh, user's perspective. Uh, what we're going to do then is uh, create a high level version first and then have a more detailed version later. Okay so underneath each of these two symbols uh, which are going to be interacting in a sequence or a list of steps I'm going to be putting some lines. So first, I'm going to put a nice long line here, and I'm going to 
click on it and then my screen's a little bit squished so normally it would show all this um, uh, without me having to click the more but that's okay and I'm gonna have no uh, endpoint on my arrow okay um, from here I can do the same thing however it kind of it's a little bit annoying on this particular tool how it makes the line go right through their body uh, if I click on them so um, I don't want to uh, so I'm not going to use uh, the native line on this I'm actually going to go up to the top grab this line oops all right fight me with it a little bit here connect it to the lower dot and then pull it down okay well that'll have to be close enough for right now usually I can line it up directly into the person but uh, right now I'm having a little bit of trouble for some reason okay so I'm going to again make just make this a dotted line so this is the lifeline okay so a sequence diagram is a list of steps and as it relates to my use case it says first thing that happens is employee selects add a comic in the comic system well if you recall you can't do that until you log in so let's add an additional step um, okay there's one other things I'm, I'm gonna add here and that is the uh, activation bar so coming back to here I click on this now the dotted line just means that a an object in an in an interaction is available to use, but this uh, activation bar means that this particular object or class is currently being used or it's currently doing something. Um, this is going to be more relevant as we move out into other objects when we go down to the code level of detail. Uh, for now. I'm just going to start right here, drag an arrow across, and this is the equivalent of a function. So the user is going to log in as their first step and supply a username and password, and that is something, a detail that was stated in the requirement statement, but it's also kind of assumed. Now it's optional whether we have an arrow going back the other way. Uh, we usually don't like to add them because it clutters up a diagram, but just for illustration purposes, I will uh, add a couple on this one. Acknowledgement. Okay. So we're saying that a person logged in to an interface and they got an acknowledgement. Okay, so one of the things they need to do, pull this down a little bit closer, is they need to be able to select add a comic. So I'm going to do another function in the system from the user's perspective. They are going to select add comic option. And when they do that, let's just say on this system that a menu pops up. Okay, so let me add in another activation bar for a function that's going to happen here. So as soon as this person does this calls this function or clicks on this in the interface it's going to pop up something and I will write this as show comic uh, input screen so this is a symbol for a self call uh, once that is completed the user is going to be enter be able to enter things into that interface so the user is now going to interact with the application by enter comic information and that's going to include the title, the issue, publisher, uh, condition. Uh, usually I would spread this out a little farther but I don't want to um, mess up my screen too much. Well, let's see if I can drag it. Okay, yeah it's working. Okay, so another function, well Let's see. Ooh. See my little activation bar there is uh, kind of not where it needs to be anymore. Um, okay, so uh, now that they've entered in this information, uh, let's just say that we don't want to have duplicates in our system. So we don't know how to have duplicates of the exact same issue number, comic name, etc. So I'm going to add in another 
activation bar for a self call. And this function is going to be called check for duplicates. And uh, let's just say it passes that. Then the next thing that the system is going to do is do a self call, which is going to be save comic. So what's happened here is we took our original use case and then we added in a few things like check for duplicates and um, login. So these are, you can add into the original story and the reason for that is because we it's sort of a process of discovery as you do these sequence diagrams and you realize things that are messed out or left out that need to be included. And as the last thing here, I'm going to put a little arrow back to here. And uh, like I did earlier, I'll add an acknowledgement. And I'll move that right there. And I will make this line uh, dotted. Okay, so I have now completed what I would call a system sequence diagram, which is from the user's perspective, it is the messages or the actions happening back and forth between objects. Um, from here, we can elaborate on this further from the system's perspective as it relates to what are the messages that are gonna get passed around between different objects. So that is your traditional meaning of a sequence diagram, and I'm gonna cover that in the next video.